ಓಂ ಮಧ್ಯಾನಾಥಿನೀರಂದಸ್ಯನಂಜನಾಶಲಾಖಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷೂರ್ಮಿತ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ ಪುಚ್ಚ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವರ್ಗ ಪಂಡಿತ ಮಹಾಪಂಡಿತ್ವಯೋಶ್ರ ಗೌರವಪರೆಯ ಪರಂಪರಚಲಿತ ಪ್ರಚಕ್ರಮೂರ್ತಕೃತ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ನಿರ್ಮಲ ನಿರ್ಜರಸ್ಸ ನಿಕೃತ ಸಂರಾಕಂ ಸಾದರ ವಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುದೇವ ಮನತ್ ಶ್ರೀರೋಚಾಸುಪರಂಗುರವಿಷ್ಟುಪ್ರಖಂ ಗುರುನೇರಶೀಷಂಭುಷಿತ ಚಿಂತ್ಯಾಚಿತ್ಯ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಪುನಃ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಕನಾನಗಂ ಗೋವಿಂದೀತಮುಜ್ವಲಂ ಮರತನಂ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಅಮಿತ ಸುಂದರಂ ವಂದೇ ವಿಶ್ವಗುರುಂಚ ದಿವ್ಯ ಭಗವತ್ಯೀಜಪ್ರದ ದೇವಂ ದಿವ್ಯ ತನಂ ಸುಚಂದ ವದನ ಬಲಾರ್ಕ ಚಲಂಚಿತ ಚಂದ್ರಾನಂದಪುರಂ ಸದೇಕವರ್ಣ ವೈರಗ್ಯ ವಿದ್ಯಮುನಿ ಶೀಶಿಧಾಂತ ನಿಧಿ ಶುಭಕ್ತಿ ಲಕ್ಷಿತ ಸಾರಸ್ಪತ್ರಂಬರಂ ವಂದೇ ತಂ ಶುಭತಮೇಕ ಶರಣಂ ಯಶಸ್ವರ ಶ್ರೀಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಪೀಡಿತ ಗೌರ್ಯ ಗುರುವನ್ವಯ ಪಾಠ ಬಾನುರೀವ ಪ್ರಬತ್ತ ಗಗನೇಯ ಗೌರ್ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ ಮಾಯಾಟಿಂಗಿಲೋದರ್ಗತ್ತನ್ನು ವಿಚ್ಚ ಜೀವಾನಿ ಮಾನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಶಿದಿ ಗಹನಸ್ಕಂ ಪ್ರಗತ್ರಂ ಭಜೆ ಪಂಚಕಾಪಾತೃಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭಯ ಪಠಿತಾನ ಪಾವನ ಪೋ ವಿಷ್ಣು ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾಬದನ್ಯಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಮಿ ಕುರುತ್ತಿಸೇ ನಮಃ ವೃಂದಾಯ ತುಲಸಿ ದೇವಾಯ ಪ್ರಾಯ ಕೆಸ್ವಸಚ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಜಿವಿ ಸಚ್ಚವಚಿ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಆತ್ಮನಾತ್ಮ ಮಂತ್ರ ಗುರುನ್ ಗುರುನ್ನ ಭಗವತ್ ಹತದನ್ ವ್ಯಾಸಂಜಗದ್ಗುರುನ್ ಹತ್ವಯಂಬೀರಯ ಚಾಯ ಸ ಪರಿಕರ ಶಿಷಿ ಗುರು ಗೌರಂಗ ಗಂಡರ್ವ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಸುಂದರ ಪಾತ್ಪತ್ರ ಜಯಸ್ತು ಚಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀ ಬಸರಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೋಮ ಸೆಷನ್ So today we will be reading from Revere Truth. It's an amazing book with a compilation of discourses illuminating the essence of uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching by our beloved Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pat, Shila Bhakti Sundar, Govinda Maharaj. So I'll now hand you over to Kano Kriya Devi. I'll share the screen. We'll be reading from chapter 8, Ways of Karma and Prema. Ways of Karma and Prema. As humans, we all know we have a human body. There is no doubt that we've taken human birth. But how has such fortune come to us? Somehow we came to our mother's womb, and from our mother's womb to where we are now. But we don't really know how we came into our mother's womb and where we were before that. Most persons in this world are not using their time to try to understand this and discover how they can make the best of use of their life. The sadhus and scriptures come to give people proper consciousness about this. The most important question of life. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is described that when Maharaj Parichit was cursed to die within seven days, he asked all the great rishis and munis of, his, of this time How can I make the best possible use of this short time? Many rishis and munis were present in a grand assembly and they gave their opinions according to their ability. But it was as though so many different bottles of medicine were bought to a sick man and he could not decide which one to take. All the rishis and munis were very scholarly and qualified. But Maharaj Parichit felt confused after hearing all of their different opinions. He said, I cannot understand what to do. All of you together should decide what is best for me. At that time, Sukadev Goswami came into the assembly and all the Rishis and Munis gave full honor to him. They told Maharaj Parichit, this is the most qualified person to answer your question. Sukadev Goswami sat upon a throne in front of everyone. Maharaj Parichit worshipped him and then asked, how can I derive the greatest benefit from life within the short period of time I have left to live? When Sukadev Goswami heard Parichit Maharaj's question, he said, oh, you are so fortunate. You have asked the supreme question. This is the only question there is actually. 
Shota Vyadini Ragendra Nirnam Santi Sahashashaha Apashatam Atma Tatpam Raheshu Graha Medhinam Shumad Bhagavatam 212. Other persons ask so many questions. How do we cook this? How do we clean that? How do we perform fire sacrifice? How do we offer worship? When persons do not know the nature of the perfect question, then they ask so many questions that are unnecessary. The only real question is, how can we be supremely benefited during our short lifetime? Maharaj Parikshit knew he had only seven days to live when he questioned Shukadev Goswami. Unlike Maharaj Parikshit, we are not sure how long our lifetime will last. But if we receive some proper consciousness and realize that we may die at any moment, then we will immediately try to recover what is uh, supremely beneficial for our lives and try to proceed in that way. Without proper consciousness, we will consider that we have so many mundane duties that are all very important. So I'll go there. Very nice, interesting topic, very interesting subject matter. Anyone that's got any questions they would like to ask? Any comments? Please feel free. So, uh, Shila Gurudevya is reciting the past time about Maharaj Parikit. And uh, many of you know that Maharaj Parikit is the son of Abhimanyu. And Abhimanyu is the son of Arjuna. So that Maharaj Parikit is coming in the line of the Pandavas. And we see um, towards the end of the battle of Kuruketra, uh, the son of Dronacharya. Dronacharya is the teacher of the Pandavas, the Kuravas. And his son is Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama, he tried to destroy Maharaj Parikit with a very special weapon known as the Brahmastra weapon. And he was trying to destroy Maharaj Parikit while he was still in the womb of his mother, Uttara. He wanted to end the family line of the Pandavas. But we see Lord Krishna came and he saved him. So here as well, um, we talk about this curse. You know, Maharaj Parikit was cursed. And Lord Krishna could have come and saved him as well from this curse. We know that the Lord can do anything. Nothing is impossible. But Maharaj Parikit knew, you know, he did some wrong. So he accepted this curse and he was prepared to meet with his death. Right. And this is the nature of a pure devotee. You know, um, he did some wrong, he's accepting it. Yes, now I will happily accept this curse. He was not blaming anyone. Uh, he's not blaming the Lord. He was not fighting with the environment, but he was taking all responsibility, you know, on his own shoulders. Like this. Shila Guru Maharaj explains this very nicely in one of his lectures. That the fault is with me, I am to blame. I must concentrate all blame on my own shoulders. This is the shortest part to Goloka. Shla Guru Maharaj uh, says this in one of his lectures. So Maharaj Parikit did not make any arrangements to protect himself from this curse. Instead, he gave up the kingdom and he went in search of the sadhu. He wanted to hear about the glories of the Lord in this last few days that he had left to live. So he knew he had seven days. There was a curse in seven days time. This uh, type of a snake will come and it will bite him. And so what he decided to do was go and search for the sadhus. You know, um, so his good fortune, Gurudev explains this, his good fortune was that he knew he had so many days to live, but we don't know this. We don't know how many days we have left. So we have to make the best use of every single day, not to waste our energy and material life on all external things, unnecessary gossip, all these things. That will just bring us more trouble, more pain, more anxiety. But rather we are to dive deep follow the instructions of our divine masters. We are to focus on the service of the Lord and his devotees. And continuously, we should try to make progress. I guess. So there were many sages that approached Maharaj Parikit when he went there. You know. But we see that finally he surrendered to the lotus feet of Srila Sukadev Goswami. So if we are very sincere in our search for the absolute truth, then the Lord will arrange for us to come into the association of a very bona fide spiritual teacher. We are learning this from this past time. Shri Guru Maharaj says, sincerity of the heart is the real capital. 
if we are sincere, the Lord will reveal himself to us through his pure devotees. The Lord can reveal himself through the deities and through his pure devotees. Who is that devotee who can understand and preach the supreme conception of Mahaprabhu? Who is that devotee who has surrendered to this conception and is living his life according to that? You know? So if I am sincere, then the Lord will arrange that type of association for me like that. And that special devotee will help me to burn my ignorance, my misconceptions in the fire of dedication. So Maharaj Parikiti could have asked so many questions, you know, but he asked a question that benefits the whole of mankind. How can I derive the greatest benefit from life within the short period of time I have left to live? So just by this one question, the Shishimad Bhagavatam was preached. And even up to this very day, the devotees of the Lord are benefiting from this. I'll stop there and maybe somebody else would like to comment or I was just, I was just thinking probably it's very hard to when we hear these things, we hear it and in our in in we can understand it, but to realize it is a different thing. And how do we you know mm. really Sorry, say again, Didi. I was saying, how do, you know? How do we? I guess how do we make that transformation from mm. just knowing something, knowledge, and realization? The difference. Yes. So, on our own, it's very difficult. You know, um, Srila Guru Maharaj says that if I want to grow my business and I have a small business, I have to join that person who's got the capital, who's got the big business. Mm -hmm. He can help make my business grow, you know, like that. So that devotee who has a proper understanding, you know, who has crossed over, you know, and he's on the transcendental plane. So they're not on the material plane anymore. You know, we cannot see that. We do not have the vision to see that. Srila Gurudev explains this in, I think it's affectionate guidance. That devotees who transform themselves, you know, they become so soaked in Krishna consciousness that they only live for the Lord and his devotees. Um, although they may seem to be on the material plane, you know, like, uh, like ordinary human beings, but actually they're not. You know, they're not on this plane at all. They've transformed completely, you know, and they uh, transcended. So they can help us. They have the strength. They have the knowledge. They can help us. And the Lord will reveal himself through those pure devotees to come and assist us. Mm. So it works both ways, you know. Um, we have to make that endeavor and then Krishna, the grace of Krishna will come through his devotees, through Guru. Like that. Mm. So uh, our Guru is explaining us the pastime of um, Mother Yashoda. When Mother Yashoda, she's going to tie Krishna with a rope, you see the rope is always two fingers short. Mm -hmm. So why two fingers? Always two fingers short. She went and got more rope, came back again, and again the rope is two fingers short. So it's explained that the two fingers, one finger is representing the endeavor of the devotee, and the other finger is representing the grace of the Lord. So like that. It's a two-way transaction. The endeavor must be there. Mm. So if I come to a situation in my life, it's like, you know, I've had enough of this material world, you know, there's so much of suffering and so much of pain and I've tried so many different things in my life to become successful but I'm not experiencing that happiness within me then it means there's something wrong I'm not doing something wrong, you know so who can help me to you know uh, experience that real eternal happiness you know deep within my heart who can help me to transform my heart you know uh, so when we come to that stage of our life where we question ourselves what am I doing you know is this going to be beneficial for me in this lifetime, in my next lifetime, in every other lifetime, you know, or is this whatever I'm doing, it's causing me to drown even more and more, you know, sink deeper, you know, like that. And then that's when we start searching and our gurus use this term, Atato Brahma Jignasa. That's when the real search starts. You know, who am I? You know, who is the Supreme Lord? Sambandha Gyan starts over there, you know, due to my ignorance, you know, due to this misconception that I've accepted, it has caused me more anxiety, you know, more than anything else. So how to get rid of that, you know, 
we have to find someone who can remove this ignorance. And that's why we always, you know, praying to our gurus and the Vaishnavas, Banchakar Patru Vyascha, you know, Omagyana Timiran Dasya, we're reciting these prayers. And what does it mean? You know, Om Agyan, Agyan, ignorance. You know, who can remove this ignorance from me? Who can, you know, help me um, by shining this torchlight of knowledge, you know, within my heart and giving me proper consciousness? Then if I'm really sincere in my search, you know, it, might, it, it may not be immediately, it may take some time, but if I am persistent, if I am, you know, um, really sincere in what I want and slowly but surely, uh, the Lord will make arrangements for, for me to come to that situation and he will reveal to me his pure devotee who will impart that knowledge to me like that. Mm -hmm. So, and again, you know, even though we come to Krishna consciousness, we see there are many devotees that come to Krishna consciousness, but how many can really understand the teachings of Gurudev? You know, yeah. not just listening to Guru, many will listen, they will sit and listen to Guru, but will everybody understand what Guru is saying? Will they follow properly? You know, will they make the proper adjustments? You know, like that. Will they make progress? And we see it's not always the case. So someone may ask why? Why is that the situation? Why is that the case? So many come to Guru, but they leave. So many come to Guru, but they don't make progress. They're stuck in one place. You know, they're not finding the joy in their spiritual life. You know, they're chanting, but they're not getting taste. You know, and yet we are told by our spiritual masters, we are reading in scripture that Krishna's name is filled with so much of sweetness and beauty. You know, there's so much of nectar just in one name, you know. But why am I not experiencing that? Why am I not tasting that? So that's the question I have to ask myself. So even though we come to Guru, but sometimes uh, this transformation doesn't take place. So Srila Shira Maharaj says, physical proximity is not association. Mm. So what does that actually mean? So I can be very close to my guru physically, but am I really making connection with him? Am I listening to him? Do I understand his nature, his mood? What is it he really wants? Am I connecting with that? But it's not a physical thing. Physical proximity is not association. Mm. And he gives the example of the louse. The louse goes onto guru's hair. It doesn't mean that louse is associating with guru. It's coming there to give him anxiety. The mosquito sits on Guru's arm. Does that mean the mosquito is associating with Guru? No. The mosquito is coming there to suck his blood. It's coming there to give anxiety. So I must ask myself, you know, what am I? Am I coming to serve my Guru, to give joy to his heart? Or am I like that mosquito? Just being present there, but trying to, you know, just take his energy mm -hmm. for my satisfaction, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. So what is my intention? I get always, I must ask myself, why am I coming to Guru? Why have I come to Krishna consciousness? What is my intention? Like that. And if we ask ourselves these questions and we do some deep in introspection, and not just once or twice, but all the time we, need, we have to do this type of introspection, you know, then the answers will surely come to us. The Lord is so kind, he's so merciful. You know, he knows you are sincere. He knows what's happening in your heart. You know, he can tell, you cannot lie to the Lord, obviously. He knows everything. So he can see how much of sincerity there is in your heart. Like that. And accordingly, he will reciprocate. Like that. So not everybody comes to the lotus feet of a bona fide guru. Many are searching, but somehow they come and they take the association of bogus gurus. See, again, we can see this. So many of, um, so many out there, you know, they are not preaching the proper conceptions. You know, they're given their own interpretations of scriptures, you know, that misinterpretations, misconceptions, and people are following these misconceptions. We can see all over the world, this is happening. This will always be there. So we have to dig really, really deep, you know, dive deep, come to the lotus feet of Guru and come in a very surrendered mood like that. Parikit Maharaj is approaching Sukhadev Goswami in a very surrendered mood, you know, like that very submissively and he's asking him, what can I do in this short time that I have left? What can give us the greatest benefit? That is a question to ask. So yeah, there's a nice photo here being shared. You can see Sukhadev Goswami, so effulgent, so glorious, sitting there, son of Shilavyasadev. 
and very so many great personalities are seated in that assembly, grand assembly, speaking to everyone. And he's so young, Sukadev Goswami, very young, extremely a young boy. And everything is manifest within his heart like that. So who can preach this conception given by Mahaprabhu? Who can preach this, you know, supreme conception given by our Guru? So sweetly they've explained it. You know, the Lord is revealing all of this through his pure devotee. If I am sincere, then yes, I will come into the association of those pure devotees and they will help me. They will give me strength to overcome my anarthas. Uh, they will give me the strength to slowly remove my faults, to remove the misconception like that. All the misconception must be removed. The ego must be removed. You know, We have to move past this, uh, that stage of uh, anartha nivriti. Otherwise, we cannot get to the stage of ruchi. It's not possible. Taste will not come. Anartha nivriti must be removed. All the anarthas must be removed. And they can help us to do that. They will burn all of that with the fire of dedication. They'll help us to cross over, pass exploitation, pass the stage of renunciation, and slowly but surely come to the plane of dedication with proper understanding, proper understanding. That is the main thing. Must understand the conception. Mm. Not just doing things, you know, following very blindly. Like that. Not being fanatical, I would say. Okay, anybody else got any other questions or comments? Sorry, did I was making sense what I'm saying? Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Jai Guru. Uh, okay, maybe we'll some kirtan? The um, elder, elder flower cordial. Um, Lila Sundari actually did a video. It's actually a beautiful video to actually, um, sharing a recipe for elder flower cordial. Uh, Dandabats, everyone, how are you this morning? Here I am, bright, sunny, very warm English countryside. Today I'm going to show you how to identify elderflower. First of all, get yourself a nice little basket here. I've got some already cut and I've got a paper bag because it's the pollen we want and we don't want to be losing any of the pollen. I've got pair of scissors so that you can cut. So this is the English elderflower. It's um, a native plant to the UK uh, and Northern Europe um, and it lives along as you can see hedgerows. Though it's an elder tree it's not necessarily a tree, it's more like a shrub. So to identify the flowers, they're tiny, tiny, tiny little heads. And these heads will turn into elderberries a bit later on in the year. What you need to know is the leaf has a five leaf finger kind of thing. This is what the leaf looks like. And obviously, the flowers smell divine. So this, I'm going to pan out, is how you would find it. It's amongst, it can be up high as well, there's some up there. But it's generally a hedgerows or woodland shrub or tree. Always pick away from the main roads. You'll see it everywhere at the moment. It's just coming into bloom. And uh, let's get picking. Oh, here we've got some more. So they're quite random. You could just walk in along and uh, you find another tree. I'd like to also mention that you need to pick in the mornings. That's um, after the dew has gone today. Absolutely perfect, not a cloud in the sky. So the, the morning dew has left the flower and the flowers drying off. I would say pick before 11 o'clock because after that, you've got the um, high uh, m uh, noonday sun and uh, 
this time in the morning, it's about nine o'clock, is perfect time to pick. And look at that, so pretty, it's like... Dad Vats, everyone. Well, my kitchen smells wonderful at the moment. So I've just got back and I've been cutting the heads. So this is the head. And I'm just taking the main part of the stalk off. So I have a few here left. So what I have done, so I'll give you the ingredients first. So you need quarter of a cup of citric acid to one and a half litres of water. Um, you want four unwaxed, <coughs> unwaxed lemons and about 30 elderflower heads. Now, if they're quite small, I'd go to 40, but if they're quite big ones, stick to about 30. So, cut them onto a cloth. I don't know if you can see. I've got them on a piece of newspaper because the pollen is important. So, I boiled, I'm doing twice the quantity this morning because I've got a lot of flower heads, so I've doubled the quantity. So, I've here, I boiled uh, my one and a half, or from, yeah, because I'm doubling, so. So I've boiled my water and I've added the sugar on the stove. Um, I, it's, I've placed it into this larger bowl because I'm doubling the quantity. So at the moment, the sugar water is cooling. So the next thing to do is to, oh, forgot to say, so the lemons, grate the lemons. So there they are, grated. So I'm gonna add the grated lemon rind to the water and give it a stir. Oh, it smells so lovely. And I'm going to add the lemons to the water. Already cut up there. And give that a stir. This recipe is so easy, really. Um, always sterilise everything. I use baby sterilising tablets um, just to be on the safe side. Um, and obviously you will need clean muslin. So I've put that, I don't know if you can see, into my big container. And now I'm going to add the citric acid. So I've doubled the quantities, but that is half a cup, so, no, quarter a cup. Citric acid, give that a stir. And then gently add all these wonderful little perfect flowers so once you've done this it needs to sit for 48 hours to kind of get the flower the, the flavor going um, so let's get these flower heads in and give it another stir push them down And so over the course of the 48 hours, the flower heads will, you go, oh, uh, they will turn colour. They will turn, they won't stay white. They will start to um, turn slightly beigey kind of brown. Don't worry, that is natural. And so there we go. This is all going to ferment itself for 48 hours. So... Take your muslin, cover, and let it do its mojo. So tomorrow, or in 48 hours time, again, 
I put mine into bottles. Sterilise, obviously always sterilise. When this has done its thing, I will strain it again through muslin and uh, let it drip and get as much of the juice out. And I would then put it back onto the heat and simmer very, as soon as it comes to a small simmer, knock the heat off. In the meantime, you've sterilized and got your bottles clean, take a funnel and um, decant into your bottles. Now, I leave mine in a cold corner in the house, on the floor, in a dark corner, but people can put it in the fridge. Um, it will last up to about three months. So let's make cordial. Anyway, hope you're having a great day. Weather's beautiful. Get out there and pick yourself some out, uh, elderflowers. So take care. Thank you very much. Hey folks, everyone, how are you? Well, here we are. This is the last stage. You can see the steam coming off of the elderflower here. Um, it was strained through the muslin. As, I, as you can see, it's turned the beigey brown colour that I said would happen. So, everything's been sterilised. Um, so, it's just decanting. So, take your funnel and um, I've let this cool for a little while because you don't want to be putting very hot liquid into glass because it will fracture. Also, I'd like to <laughs> go through the ingredients again. So it is a quarter a cup of citric acid, one and a half litres of water, uh, two and a quarter pound of sugar, uh, four unwaxed lemons and take the rind off the lemons and then slice. So that's it basically. Very simple. So let's, so the colour should be a really nice, oh, clear lemony there if you can see now this is a cordial so you can add it to just water or uh, sparkly water that would be really nice a nice cool drink in the warm summer days so there we go so it should, when it cools it should have a really nice clear light lemony color um, look to it so that is basically it so I'm going to carry on um, decanting and um, when it's cooled a little bit more, I will put the lid on tight and that's it. Put it in your fridge, it has a lifespan of about three months, but it's so yummy, you'll drink it straight away. And uh, I hope I've been of some help and uh, have a great time. Have, have a go at making this. Thank you very much for your time. Dandavads. Yes, I've got a second batch on the go downstairs. I shall be bottling that up tomorrow. <laughs> it should have a really nice... Look so easy. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it has a really lovely, clear, lemony colour to it. And uh, you really ought to try it because it's, it's, it's very, it's very yeah, that's, tasty. <laughs> Does a flower got any smell, did you? It really smells strong. Yeah, it has a real, really beautiful smell. 
Um, and obviously the, the, the cordial, you can, it, 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 apart, obviously it's, it's slightly lemony, but the, the, it's a unique flavour to the UK, I think, elderflower. Um, they're also very good. I, I, I didn't mention then those little flower heads. If you um, got some tempura batter, you could deep fry them. I mean, you can eat them as, as well. Yeah, very tasty. It's a very delicate, delicate taste and smell. Um, like the cordless flowers are nice and um, deep fried also, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, courgette flowers. You can uh, yeah, eat that. Yeah, flowers, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. There you go. So <laughs> wonderful. And and there's some um, some very good health benefits, you know, mm -hmm. um, with the elderflower. It's used for sinusitis, colds, flu, bronchitis, diabetes. Yeah, yeah. And also, in uh, when the flower turns to an elderberry, you can then make elderberry cordial, um, elderberry jam. I also make a cough syrup with elderberries by using uh, cinnamon, cloves, star anay, and all different things. And that's quite syrupy. And I bottle that up and put that in the fridge. So when the winter months come in and you have a little bit of a chesty cough, you've got your homemade cough syrup. Amazing. Yeah. You yeah. have to show us how to do that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Didi, for that wonderful recipe. <laughs> yes. Okay. Is um, Krishna Keshava? Yeah, I think he's here. Oh, delayed or is he back? I think he's here. I think there was some misunderstanding with times. <laughs> we've moved because we've made it earlier, but he's here, I think. He's here. Down, down the uh, can you see me? Oh, we can see the wall. <laughs> we can see the wall. <laughs> down the lights. Okay. Ah, down the lights. Uh, uh, yeah. Now crossing over to Krishna Keshava Das in USA going to be sharing a recipe with us. Over to you, Prabhu. Yes. Uh, first, please accept my dhanavats. Anchakalpa tri vyas chakra pasindu biva chapa titanam pavani biva vaishnavi biva namonama. So today we're making samosas. So, uh, the st so samosas are made up of a filling, vegetable filling. We'll be doing potato and pea uh, with some other vegetables today. And then... Um, and then the dough. So I started boiling a potato. Uh, I'll only be making about five samosas, a small batch. Um, so I'm boiling one potato and now I'm cutting um, a pepper and I'm gonna cut an eggplant so I can start making the stuffing. And then while that's cooking, uh, we'll make the dough. Um, and I'll try, of course, to show what's going on here. Um, the, the toughest part with the samosas is going to be folding it. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward and pretty quick. Try to uh, cut the stuffing as, especially the pepper and the eggplant, as small as possible because we're going to be stuffing it into a relatively small opening on the samosa. was um, mentioning to Kanu Priya Devi the other day that I'm, I'm definitely very far from an expert with making these samosas and 
my biggest challenge is getting them to uh, to burst with flavor. Uh, it's kind of tough to spice them for, from my experience for some reason. Um, so basically I'll be using some cumin, black pepper, turmeric, and uh, and that's about it. Um, but you know, you you make at home and you're offering, uh, however you like to spice things, if you like to make it very spicy or not so spicy or however, uh, then I would recommend spicing however you like. I'm not so good at the spicing with the samosas. Do you use chili brother? You can for sure. I think most recipes would probably recommend it, um, but I don't Thank use you. it. Like I'll only be using a little red pepper flake and uh, black pepper for the heat. Mm -hmm. And then when we fry them, um, I use sunflower oil because it's supposed to be a lot better for frying like olive oil because we're deep frying them yeah and so olive oil is not good to deep fry and coconut oil is not good to deep fry so sunflower oil is supposed to be pretty good or i think also any vegetable oil like a, your like a standard vegetable oil So this is the potatoes boiling and I'm going to make the rest of the filling in here. <clears throat> and then I have some frozen green peas that I'm going to use. So while the potatoes are still boiling is a good time to make the dough. And uh, for the dough, I have a half an ounce of cream cheese and then like, like an eighth of a stick of butter. Normally it's good to let it sit out uh, you know, for maybe for like an hour, half hour, just to let it soften. And then here I have about uh, j just a little over a half of uh, half a cup of white flour, just plain white flour. And then I'll use about a, a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder.
And then a half a cup of water on the, on the side. You might not need all of it. So since uh, the butter and the cream cheese in my case right now isn't so soft. I'm going to use my hands to knead it in. It's a lot easier to break it down. If you don't like using your hands, then using a spoon is okay, of course. And actually, I, I got the um, the idea for using the cream cheese in the dough from the Seva Ashram website. They have one recipe for cauliflower pea samosas, I think. And uh, they, they recommended to use the cream cheese. And it comes real nice. It makes the, the, um, the dough, when you finish frying it, it's kind of flaky like a pastry. Mm. One of the, the reasons that uh, I was motivated to try to learn how to make samosas was because we heard that a big fundraiser that uh, Shripad Bhakti Kamal Tyagi Maharaj used to do when he was staying in California at the Seva Ashram was, I guess some of the devotees living there would make a lot of samosas. And then he would go out to <laughs> like the rock concerts in the area. And when there was lots of people there and he would distribute the samosas. Uh, and he would go to different concerts and stuff like that and distribute the prashad. And uh, it turned out to be like a, a good, a really great fundraiser for the temple. So we're trying to, you know, see if that works here. <laughs> we haven't been able to, we haven't been able to distribute it to the public yet. And you know, I'm not so good making them, but that's the idea behind it. But you do do food distribution sometimes. Yeah, we started, uh, at the end of March, um, having meals, Prashad, uh, packaged meals, and we go to Princeton uh, at the YMCA there, and then we distribute them. Mm. So I'm still kneading the dough, but once you're done kneading it, uh, we put it in a bowl and either cover it with a towel or just put it on the cutting board and put the bowl upside down to just uh, keep it isolated from, I guess, the light and air to some extent. And it, somehow it helps let the dough set. And then once the dough is setting, it's supposed to set for about 10 minutes. We'll go back to the potatoes that are boiling and the peas that are steaming and, and make, the, uh, make the filling. Mm -hmm.
does the camera look a little lopsided to everyone watching? <laughs> it's fine. It's That's good. Okay. Yeah, you can good, see. Yeah. 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 Nice. The cream cheese in the dough is interesting. It's a, it's the first time I'm hearing that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I know they put the ghee, oil and ghee, but that, I don't know cream cheese. Mm. Mm. So we're going to try. I'm going to have to try now, yeah. <laughs> oh. <gonna> try. And you can, I think, use also brown flour with this recipe. Yeah, um, using whole wheat flour, it would definitely change a lot, I think. Um, like yeah. texture. Yeah, it would come out a lot denser for one thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I don't know if it would change how long you have to fry them for, but I'm sure it's possible. and. I'm sure there are lots of recipes that have accounted for the whole wheat flour and then they kind of changed the recipe, but you know, I'm sure it's online already. Mm. But I'm not sure how to accommodate for that yet. So I'm gonna make a, a chance with olive oil. Just a little bit. Then I'm going to use, put on, <clears throat> I have it on uh, just slightly above medium heat. And then I'm gonna let the oil heat. And then the spices I'm gonna use are uh, whole cumin seeds, uh, black powdered black pepper, um, crushed red pepper, and then powdered turmeric. Um, normally I would try to use the fresh turmeric, uh, but I think it'll be a little quicker if I just use the powdered right now. And I'm going to use a little more than a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And then I'll, I'll wait to add the red pepper and turmeric until the chance starts to cook a little bit. Today in the in the states, uh, 
today in New York City, ISKCON is having their Ratha Yatra. I think next Sunday is the Ratha Yatra in Jagannath Puri. They're allowing um, congregations? I, I didn't think so, but uh, mm. one devotee who uh, comes to the programs here and mm. helps with our food distribution, he's going, he told me he's going to New York today for Rathiatra. I was a little surprised. Does anyone know what's happening for Rathiatra in uh, Jagannath Puri? Will they restrict um, people going? I it's remember last July. July. In July, yeah, 12th of July. Ah, just wondering yes, 12th of July. What, what, whether this, how the situation is in India and whether they'll be okay. The COVID situation, I think the numbers are still high there, no? So, not sure. So you put in, can you tell us what you put in Prabhu? Yeah, I have a table. Um, so I, I used about a tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons of olive oil. I, I let that heat. And then I added first um, a tablespoon of cumin, of whole cumin seeds, and a little over a half of a teaspoon of black pepper powder. And then I let that heat by itself. And then I just added um, some turmeric and, and red pepper. I kind of eyeballed that, I didn't measure it. And now I'm gonna add uh, the chopped eggplant and pepper first. You know, when you said you did the, the pepper, like pepper powder, is it pepper and is it paprika? Or did you put like the red pepper with like the paprika? Not paprika, uh, it's- Black it's pepper. Well, black pepper and also crushed red pepper. Oh, okay. Like red red pepper flakes. I'm going to add the green peas. Uh, for boiling the potatoes, it's always better not to boil them too much uh, because then I'm going to cut them a little smaller and mm. add them to the rest of the vegetables. And if, if you cook them too soft, then it'll just become like mashed potatoes when you stir it all. Mm. And then uh, so that means inside when you stuff the samosas, you won't have the texture or like the crunch of the potato. It'll just be mushy. So depending on what you like, I guess you can cook it according to that. But I tend to cook it a little less. So there's more of a texture to the inside of a samosa. So how many potatoes are you using? Well, I used one for today, one potato. Oh, okay.
Hello, Pranam Pranishwari Didi. How are you, Pranishwari Didi? Pranams to you and, and uh, Satya Sundari and to you all. I am I am very happy to see him cooking in such a tiny kitchen and so organized and everything is measured. I love the way he, he prepared the dough, only one hand holding. It was so beautiful. Mm. I, I only can learn how to cook uh, by the grace of my Siksha Gurudev, Sri Pradhakimad Puri Maharaj. You taught me uh, just how to cook very nicely. Otherwise, I'd be like little infant in the kitchen, burning myself and making things explode. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's, but that's how we learn. <laughs> it's a trial and error, huh? Yeah, we always want like big space, more space. I also saw many pictures of Srila Acharya Dev teaching the devotees how to cook. There's one real nice one where he has like a giant spoon and he's has a t-shirt and he's stirring a giant pot. So making kichiri or something. Yeah. <laughs> I heard he was a very good cook actually. Yes, Sulachari Dev was good in making various preparations. And in one of the classes, he said that he um, he trained Sudevi, uh, Devi Dasi, and he's such an expert cook. So oh, sometime in the future, when she has the time, you can invite her to the program. That oh, is going to be it. wonderful. Yeah. Because he yeah. praised her a lot. Yeah. Yes, um, she is. She was invited, but I think it was just you know at that time she was busy with service. So we did say you know when she's free, then please. Share with us some recipes. Because yeah. Tari Maharaj oh, wanted to make sweet rice, didn't he? I think. Remember why you are boiling oh. the potato? Did you put salt? Um, I I don't put salt here because Sri uh, Padpuri Maharaj has high blood pressure, so we don't cook with salt. Oh. But otherwise, would you put the salt with potato? Yeah, salt to taste. I would. Uh, yeah. Salt to taste. I'm going to shut the heat off and then come back to the dough. A little, yeah, a little down so we can see. Yes. Yes, that's perfect. So this is the dough and we're going to break it into three equal pieces. And then roll them into balls.
And then I'm going to add some flour to this cutting board so it doesn't, so the dough doesn't stick. Oh, and I guess at this time it would be good to start uh, heating your oil uh, because we're gonna need to have that ready to fry soon. So here's one ball and just lightly flatten it in your hand a little bit. And then you don't want to make it too flat because it makes it difficult to do the second step of the stuffing and folding of the samosa. Uh, and we want to roll it into an oval and then we're going to cut it in half. So each of the balls makes two samosas. So it'll be six altogether. And then we, we cut it in half uh, this way. <laughs> so, It'll be important to have a little bit of water with you. Um, so we have this piece of dough and the first goal is to seal it like this. So we have a cone eventually. So you need some water to help seal it. So first I'm gonna put some water on the inside of the part that will be underneath the top. And then I'm gonna use a little more water to help press it. And then squeeze the end. So then we have a little cone. And then we're gonna stuff it. We have to make sure to leave enough room at the top uh, to fold the samosa. So we're gonna fold it like this.
And then this actually came out very small, but this would be what we fry in the oil. So now I'm just wetting the corners of the second samosa. And then some videos online will tell you to, after you have the cone, to kind of massage the inside of it to widen it, to, to make the space larger on the inside so you can fit more stuffing. Prabhu, maybe you could start to fry. Okay. And then could you see? Yeah. Oh. What's the result? The oil has to get a little bit hotter, but I turned the temperature up. Okay. The problem is that if you uh, use the oil and it's not in the right temperature, it will just soak oil and not yeah. fry the outside beautifully. Just soak the oil. Yes. So while, that, while the oil is heating, I'm just rolling out the second golf ball of dough. And, uh, you can fry two at a time. I'm using a very small pot, mm -hmm. um, so I don't use as much oil. If I was using a wider pot, then it would take more oil to get it to the height that I need to submerge the samosas. So it's, I think, better to use a smaller pot so you don't use as much oil. Mm -hmm. A quick way also to test the oil is to put a small piece of dough in the oil. It's a tiny piece of dough. And then as it turns brown, you know, the oil, the oil is ready. Almost, 
almost there. And they only they fry for uh, less than ten minutes. And it's not good to uh, like play with them too much while they're in there, but just enough so that they don't uh, either stick to the bottom of the pot or uh, get too dark on one surface from not being flipped. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think maybe we'll have, um, while it's frying, we'll come yeah. back to the end result. We'll have the kirtan so long. Okay. While uh, it's frying, because you said it's going to take, what, 10 minutes? 10 minutes yeah, about, yeah, about 10 minutes. Mm. And then we'll see the end result. Okay, great. Okay. 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 Praneshwari Didi, you'd like to chant? <laughs> Anyone else? we going to be chanting Gurudev Kripa Bindu Diya. Okay. Probably you can share this. Um, yes, I'm going to share now. One second. Gurudev Kripa Bindu Diya. I don't want to sing. Do anyone else wants to sing? Satya Sundari, please. Yes. No, Satya Sundari is singing the other. Um, she's already I'm, singing. I'll sing another one. Yeah. <laughs> Today we are going to listen to you. <laughs> we, we want to listen to you. Come, sing. Pranesh <laughs> Come on, Pranesh Didi. 
Deo Krishna Namadani. Deo Krishna Namadani. Krishna se to mara Krishna di te paro to mara sakati achi. Krishna se to mara Krishna di te paro to mara sakati achi. Amito kangala Krishna Krishna boli. Ami Krishna to marir to ye dan, to me the Leo di te paro. Krishna to mar Krishna deva sakti dara tu mi dilio di te paro Krishna deva sakti dara tu mi dilio di te paro Deo Vishnava Thakur Deo Vishnava Thakur Vishnava Thakur Deo Vishnava Thakur Pati mora gora chanda. Anamora nityananda. Pati mora chanda. Tira sa 
Janame Janame Morei Apilasha E Chango Sain Jabe Braja Kola Barsa Radha Krishna Nitya Lila Korila Prakasha Ananda Bolo Hari Branja Vrindavana Shinguru Vaishnava Pade Manjai Amana Shinguru Vaishnava Pade Padma Kari Asha Hari Nama Sankirtana Kohe Naruta Madasa Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Nita Gorango, Nita Gorango. Nita Gorango. Nita 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 Gorango. Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Guru Dev Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Guru Dev Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Ita gara hari bol, hari bol, hari bol, nita gara hari bol. Ita gara hari bol, hari bol, hari bol, nita gara hari bol. Hari bol, hari bol, nita gara hari bol. Hari bol, hari bol, nita gara hari bol. Jai Shri Bhakti Nimala Chari Maharaj Ki Jai. 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 Om Shiva Jagat Guru Shri Bhakti Rakhak Shida Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai 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 Vishnam Shankirtan Ki Jai Nitai Gom Jai Nande Hari 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 Dandavats Champakalata Didi Wondering if we could see the end result Prabhu Wow Lovely Nice Very nice Cut one open. Oh. So we all are coming over for some <laughs> samosa, <laughs> some chai and samosa. <laughs> it makes yeah. you look nice. Very nice. Very nice. nice. And it looks like flaky. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. From the cream cheese. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cream Ooh. cheese. Yeah, we're gonna try. We'll try. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lilith and Jill, so for sharing your wonderful other flower cordial. Thank you, Dandavat. <laughs> yeah, we enjoyed the recipes today. Nice. That's all the devotees.
and then what? So, no, thank you all once again for joining and we appreciate your association. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to seeing everybody again next week. Chai Guru Dev. Tanda. Chai Krishna. Next week, uh, Kanupriya, um, Satish is making some. Yes, I think so. Great. Just double confirm, but I think Satish is looking for next week. Yeah, he's going to make some bread and ura dal and some mango chutney. Yes, I think Gujarati mm. preparations. Yes. So we're looking forward to that next Try. week and looking forward to everyone's association. Take care. Thank you very much. And that's.